Hey guys, so for today, I'm gonna show you 11 types of knots that you can use. So the first one is bowline knot. Bowline knot. So this is used for a fixed knot that you can use. Okay, firstly, you need to twist the working end on top of the loose end. Forming a loop here, make sure the working end is on top. Okay, if you twist it like this, this is wrong. Okay, and if you do it like this, the end result is that no knot will be formed so make sure you twist the knot upward the working end is on top of the loose end and then you fit the working end from the bottom of the loop okay this is also wrong uh, if you do it like this the knot will form but it will not be very clean knot so make sure you fit it to the bottom and then you okay you pull it around the back of the loose end and then back into the loop okay after that you just pull the loose end to make the knot tighter And there you have it, the bowline knot. Another way to form this knot is by using a pinch tight. So you put the working end on top of the loose end. You pinch both ends and you twist your wrist uh, upward, upward, forming a loop here. And then follow the same process. You fit it around the back of the loose end and then feed it through into the loop and then after that just pull the loose end tight there you have it the bowline knot okay for the next knot it's called a double sheet bend this is used to join two or more ropes with same or different sizes so first one we take the bigger rope and we form a bite like this and then we'll take the smaller rope we fit it to the bottom of the bite and coil it around the bigger rope and then we make a loop with the smaller rope and we feed it through the loop this is called a single sheet band to form a double sheet band we repeat the process we call it around one more time and feed it through the same loop of the first one after that we just pull both ends to make it to make it tighter For this one, it's called a clovage, which is used to secure a knot to an object. First, we make two loops using the same direction. And then, we place the second loop on top of the first. Next, we fit the loop or the object to the loop and then we tighten the whole knot Another way to make a cloth hitch by using the one end is making a loop using the working end and we cross it over the loose end and around the object one more time.
after that we take the working end and we place it underneath the location where we cross both the ends so the working end will be placed in between the first and the the top and the bottom loop around the object pull it tight to secure the knot the next one is a round turn and two half hitches which is used to fix a knot to an object so first we make a loop around the object and then we use the working end to go around from to around go around the back of the loose end and into the loop forming a half hitch then we use the same process on the other side of the first loop or the first hitch to make a, the, the second half hitch after that just pull the loose end and the working end to tighten the whole knot next one is called a cow hitch which is used to fix a knot around an object so first we form a bite like this one and we loop it around the object and then we pull both ends through the loop The next one is a taut line hitch which is to use which is used to secure a knot to an object. So first we make a loop around the object and we place the working end on top of the loose end and we fit it to the loose end two times. And then we bring the working end to the other side of the first two loops and repeat, repeat the same process on the other side of the two loops Okay, the next one is called a Fermin Friction Hitch. It's also the same as the top line hitch, which is an adjustable knot, which is used to secure to an object. So first, we make a loop around the object, and then we put the working end on top of the loose end, and we make a bite by putting the inserting the working end between the loose end and the loop of the object so we form a, a bite like this and then what we do next is we use the bite and we, we turn it around the loose end two times like this and then the working end we pass it underneath the loose end or the loop at the of the object 
like so and we make a bite by of the working end and we feed it through the loop that we create by rotating the bite of the working end just now after that we just tighten the whole knot to, and it will become a quick release adjustable knot or the ferrament friction hitch The result of the ferrament friction hitch should look like this and it is adjustable so you can adjust the size of the loop to make it longer or shorter and the best part about this hitch is that it is easy to undone just pull the end of the working end like that and then just pull the loose end and everything will undone the next one is called a Prusik this is a type of knot which enables us to join or tie a knot at a fixed rope so first we make two loops we use the working end to make two loops to the left like so and then we bring the working end to the opposite side and this time we feed it under the fixed rope we feed it under the fixed rope and then we make two, two turns towards the center or towards the original working end and then we just pull everything tight so the prusik should look something like this when it is not tightened yet and then we just pull both sides or both the ends so that the knot is tight So the advantage of using a prusik is that it is easy to slide it along the fixed rope when it is not under tension but when it is under tension it will stay at the same point. For the next one is called a figure 8 loop. This is a fixed loop just like the bowline. So the first step is that we make a bite and we make we cross the bite over itself like so and then we feed it through the loop the figure 8 loop can also be done by using a single end of the of the rope so the first step we repeat the same process we cross the working end on top of the loose end and around the back and then we feed it through the loop like that Now we use that end around an object and after we loop it around the object we just retrace back for to it to its original loop so we just follow 
the same pattern with the first figure 8 loop And then, after completing the pattern, or we trace it the original loop, we just tighten the whole knot. So it will become a figure 8 knot. The next one is called an alpine butterfly knot. This is a knot used to create a fixed loop at the middle of the rope. So first we make a loop like that. And then from that loop, we twist one more time. So now it creates two loops on top of each other. You can use a finger on the lower loop so that it does it it stays in place. We take the top loop and bring it around the bottom and all the way to the back and insert it through the second loop or the bottom loop after that we just pull both ends to make the knot tight The next one is called a trucker's hitch which is an adjustable knot. So we tie one end to an object and then we make a slip knot by using overhand knot which where the working end is on top of the loose end, loose end or the tight end. This is called a slip knot because it can undone it can be undone. So the working end is on top of the tight end and we pull the rope of the tight end to make the to make the loop after that we pull we, we make a loop around the object and then we fit it through the slip knot just now and this creates a pulley system which can be used on shin to add to make the whole rope or the whole rope system very tight. After that, we just use a sing or a half hitch or double half hitch to secure the slip knot. 